DBT is a great and easy tool to develop production ready data pipelines using SQL. It's a toolbox that helps you package, test, and deploy your SQL pipeline. But a thing that is sometimes misunderstood is that DBT does not process the data. At the very end, it's just a client that connects to typically a cloud data warehouse where the actual computing is happening. So you always rely on this cloud dependency and the development loop then can be painful. In this video, we will process data using DuckDB and DBT. We'll go beyond the yellow word through practical use cases, analyzing Python libraries downloads. We will understand how DuckDB and DBT can simplify your architecture, speed up some pipelines and enable you to finally write the real unit tests without any cloud dependency, improving the overall developer experience. We also see some best practices regarding authentication to AWS S3 and handling incremental loads. All the source code is available on GitHub, but don't check out the solution yet. So if you are just getting started on your DBT journey or you want to learn more about DuckDB or you want to know how many caps I have, I'll answer all these questions in this video, except the later one, or maybe you just have to count. And by the way, this video is part of a series of a end-to-end -end data engineering project so if you want to check the part one about ingestion of the data, getting your own data set like a big boy, check out the link in the description. It's the same guy, uh, same sweater, just a different cap. Anyway, enough cap, let's get started. So a quick recap of the part one of the series, we ingested data from PyBI to get download statistics of a given Python library. Here it was, DuckDB library. And now we are going to transform this data to get all the metrics ready we need for the part three, which will be building the dashboard. And this part will be more fancy than looking at the data set, but that's for the next video. And for the sake of this tutorial, if you haven't done the part one of the project and you're too lazy to do it now, don't worry, I got you back. We have some simple raw data that you can use as input for the transformation pipeline and it's available on a public AWS S3 bucket. So let's talk a bit about the DBT and DuckDB integration. We saw in the intro that DBT is a Python framework that generates SQL and send it over to a cloud data warehouse for computing. And typically you have your YAML file profiles configure with the settings of your cloud data warehouse and you can quickly switch between different environments. The magic here is that for our use case, we'll use either DuckDB to read and write from AWS S3 and all the processing will happen locally directly within the same Python process. So yeah, I can't lie in my intro because I said that DBT does not process data where here you could say, yeah, the DBT process is processing data, but it's actually DuckDB behind the hood, which is doing all the compute. And the second option for our transformation pipeline would be to use ModderDuck. And because ModderDuck is DuckDB in the cloud, you have a seamless transition from working locally to scale it to the cloud. Plus for a part we will need a SQL engine because typically BI tools rely on those to fetch the data and feed the dashboard. So ModderDuck will be useful there. So let's get into the code. So here we go. The first thing you want to do is to git clone the project, which is in the description. You're going to see more files because many from the future already code the solution. So you can also decide to delete the transformation folder. So you should have a transformation folder at the root here. Just scratch that one and start from scratch. Don't cheat. For the setup, I'm using VS Code and there is a dev container definition. So if you have Docker installed, you can just reopen in a container and you're ready to go. You have the Python environment set up. Otherwise, you can check out the readme uh, with the information also regarding the setup. It's basically Python 3.11 uh, and we also use Poetry for Python package dependency. So let's start first by creating a transform folder. It's a kind of a monorepo setup. We have the ingestion folder, which was the other uh, part of the series to ingest the data. And here we're basically gonna do our dbt project within uh, the transform folder. So the first thing we want to do is install dbt and the DuckDB adapter. And you can install it actually that in a single line. So if you do poetry at dbt DuckDB, And the MD option stands for ModderDuck because ModderDuck only support at this time of this video only one DuckDB version. So it will install the DuckDB version which is compatible 
uh, with mother die. All right, now that it's done, we can go to our transform folder and do a dbt init. So this will guide us to kickstart our dbt project. So we just basically have to uh, specify the name of the project. Um, and then it asks which kind of database we'd like to connect. And because we installed to dbt uh, DuckDB packages, you see we have already the option of DuckDB. So we can just put this one and it will uh, set up a configuration for us already. All right, so now if we go to uh, our folder, we see that we have a couple of folder which has been created with some example of, uh, of models. Uh, it's just basically template to get you started. We have a dbt project file, we'll come back to that. And usually you have a profiles. So you see that it's creating here in the roots, which is within Docker container. We'll use the profile directly in the repo for simplicity so that we can version and you can adapt uh, further after if you need it. So I just copy paste the profile that was generating into my home directory directly in the repo, uh, the roots of the dbt project repo. And as you can see, you have basically uh, here the type, which is DuckDB. We have a path, uh, which is pointing to a DuckDB database if you want to persist it. And you can have also other options. You can actually uh, check out the readme of the official dbt DuckDB project to have more information on what you can do within that profile. But don't worry, we'll cover the basics and what we need actually for our use case to read the data from S3 and to use Mother Duck. So with dbt, we write SQL, right? And usually it involves a step of exploration where you use a SQL client or you go to the online UI of your cloud data warehouse. You do a couple of queries and when you're happy with it, you go right in within dbt. So let's create a simple SQL file. I'm going to call it uh, PyPI daily stats because I know that the raw data, which is um, one row per each download of the Python library, contains a lot of details. And actually, I'm probably going to do some aggregation per day because I don't need to have this level of granularity. And in data engineering, it's often a compromise between how much granularity you want at a cost of, you know, a size of a data and a complex data set. Now that we have our SQL file ready, we can actually um, start to play with uh, the DuckDB CLI. So I have the DuckDB CLI installed. You can watch, again, also link in the description how to install uh, DuckDB CLI. If you are on macOS like me, you can use Umbrew and just install DuckDB like this. And what I like to do is basically I have the DuckDB uh, CLI running in the terminal below and just on top in VS code, basically I'm going to send SQL query. And basically this is a simple trick where I basically assign a given key to a specific VS code command. And the key here is uh, command K for me. You can pick anything. And this is the command to basically run the selected text into uh, the terminal. The other thing you want to grab uh, on the repository, actually, it's on the readme, you'll find an URL which contain uh, basically the sample of uh, data for DuckDB library for a given period. It's uh, April 2023. So just grab this S3 URL from the actual readme. So now we can start to inspect this. So for example, if you do a describe table, so I just did a command K and as you can see, let me zoom out a bit. So as you can see, we can see basically uh, what is the schema of our source data. And here basically we have a, a complex strict. Let me change the line mode so that we can see basically uh, the full struct definition. And you see details here contain uh, installer and then it's uh, struct with a uh, name version, then the Python version and other things. Cool. Um, you can also get just a sample of the data. Let me go back to the duck box mode. So if I do just a from, I don't need to do a select star or whatsoever is going to give me um, some sample of data set. So we see we have the country, code, uh, URL, year, month, etc. because it's partitioned by actually year and month. That's also another interesting thing is that 
the data is partitioned, you know, um, by year and months, and we can actually select all the parquet file. Here, I select everything because it's just a sample of data. Of course, if you want to inspect some sample of data, you can do some partition printing within the path directly. All right, so let's start to construct our query. Let me uh, just put back the schema. So we probably want the timestamp, but as we're mostly interesting on how things are evolving within the days, we can convert this one to a date and let's call it download date. So here is the fields I'm mostly interested in in the data set. One other thing I realize is that the Python version contain minor patch, which might be problematic if I want to know who is using Python 3.9, let's say. I don't really care about 3.9.1 or 3.9.2. So I'm going to do a simple case when there uh, to basically uh, convert and just keep the major and minor patch for Python version. All right, so now I have my base query with all the necessary fields I'm interested to. So let's run it again and see what the result. And as we can see, we parse actually correctly um, the Python version. So there is no uh, patch version. It's only minor and all the field that we are interested, um, you know, the version of the system, uh, the distribution and the country, CPU, we have those fields. So you see, it's, tr it's pretty straightforward to query actually a uh, complex type. You just use the type annotation um, to navigate to those. So now what I want to do is basically aggregate those fields per day to have a total sum of download per day, because I don't need that much granularity in my data. And I also want to have a load ID, which can identify in a unique way uh, my row. And for that, I'm gonna just use a simple common technique in data engineering, which is using a hash of all the column field value. All right, now we, all right, so what I've done is basically create a subquery where we have our initial query, right? And then I'm uh, creating my hash based on the column value here, and I'm creating uh, my counts as the daily download sum and I'm grouping by all. That's a beautiful feature from DougDB. When you want to group by all the columns, you don't need to specify each of the column. You just specify group by all. So let's run it again, just to confirm that this one is working. And as you can see, we have the daily download sum uh, regrouped by all those fields. So here we have Windows and the correct Python version um, with only the minor version that we keep and the load ID, which is generated. Now that we have our base model working, the only thing that we need to do is templating. So we're going to add some filter condition, removing hard coded value here, like the source. And we can also add uh, some unit tests to double check that the model is working as expected. So to remove the hard coded source, we're going to create a source.yaml file here. And in this file, we're going to basically specify that it's an external source because it's sitting on AWS S3 and we specify the external location. And for that, we're going to use the onVar features from dbt, where we just load an environment variable and it's going to pick up from there. And finally, the table's name is the alias that we're going to use in, your, in our model. So the way that we reference that in our model is simple. We use the Jinja template, specify source, external, and by PI downloads, which is the name. So if I bring the source.yaml5, which is uh, sitting into our models directory, right? Uh, we see here that basically I'm picking external source and this is the name whatever you can choose uh, of the table. And so this was the location. For the location itself, we use uh, already a dot m file. I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, so we're gonna put that as an environment variable. Now, the next thing I wanna do is basically add some filtering. So what I always want is basically to run my pipelines against a time window. This is really useful for writing specific um, window here that would be our partition the download date and also for backfilling 
So we give a start date and a end date whenever we run the pipeline. And that's so useful for incremental load because we don't need to read the full data set where we only want to process the new data. So let's go on our make file now and add an entry point to run uh, this pipeline. So how does it look like? We go into the dbt folder, right? And then uh, just proceed uh, a dbt run. We specify the target. So the target is basically watch kind of environment. Here for us, it would be, do we want to use it local DuckDB or do we want to use uh, mother duck in the cloud? So one is dev and one is prod. You can name it uh, differently. And we're going to pass some uh, bars, as I said. So start date and end date. And finally, because we add already this in our make file, which is including a .env and loading it, we can just add to our .env file the value of the S3 source bucket. So you have a .env template here that you can just copy paste. And actually most of this you don't need. And let's catch again our .env which was in the source. So we pick up this dot amp and we're going to pass again the S3 path. So now the beauty of it is that I can go uh, run. So let's take again my make file for reference. I can run make by API uh, transform, then uh, dbt target, which is dev and then then start date and end date. One important information is that the sample of data only contains data from the 1st April to uh, the 7th from 2023. So if you pick other date outside this range, you won't load any data, at least if you rely on the sample of the public bucket that we offer in this exercise. But before we run this command, there is one thing we need to do. We're gonna head over our dbt project YAML file and we're going to materialize uh, our model as a table. So it's a full load. So how does that work? We basically specify the name or your model, which is by PI daily stat. And we specify the materialize uh, type, which is here a table. So now we can run it and see if it's processing correctly. And we see that we have a dev DuckDB database has been created. And if I go and launch the DuckDB CLI and open this database, so I just need to specify the path of the DuckDB um, database. And so I can see all the tables. So this is all my models. And so for example, if I take this one, I should have here some data. So that's great. So we just load data from S3 using a DBT model and we pass a specific variable, which is the time window and also uh, the S3 bucket, which is given to uh, environment variable. Now let's add some unit tests to double check that this data is actually the one that is expected. To do so, I'm going to use a package called dbt unit testing. So dbt has a package mechanism where you can install like plugins and, not, and note that at this point of this video, dbt is also revamping the unit testing method as part of the 1.8, but it's not released yet. So I'm not going to address this in this video. But if you are from the future, check out our YouTube channel. There might be a dedicated video about that. Anyway, what we need to do to install a package is to have a package.yaml file where I specify this path. So at the root of my dbt project, I'm going to uh, add the packages.yaml and now I can run dbt depths, which is going to install this specific package. All right, it's done. So how to use uh, the unit testing feature? First, what we need to do is replacing this source with something else. So it looks pretty familiar. And why we do this is to be able to mock the source data. So by passing this, the framework knows that we can actually mock this object with a given data set. And how this package is working is that we define the mock with SQL and we assess the result with SQL. So I create a file in the, the test folder, which is called test 
and then the name of the model that I want to test. And I've done a couple of things. So this is basically my test. I can have as many as I want. And this is where I'm marking the source. So you remember the abstraction in the model, this thing, this is how we're going to be able now to mock this specific source. And so, as I said, I mock using uh, basically SQL. So this is my source data. If you remember when we were exploring the data set, we have two uh, different structs, file colon, which is not really important, and then the details colon. And here you can see that I can define uh, a complex struct uh, pretty easily with DuckDB using struct pack. So here we have this struct, which is, use, which is nested by this struct. This is basically run row, and I'm just adding another row using union all. So you do a copy paste and can, you can change, you know, a couple of value. In my case here, I'm changing, you know, the version, which is here, Python 3.8.2 and 3.8.1. Uh, and because we are removing the patch, we should have expect as the result 3.8, right? It's here. We have, we aggregate by the date, which is um, the 2nd of April. And we should have two as a download, uh, daily download sum. So this is basically my expected data. So to recap, we mock the source data by calling this. We declare it using SQL and we then declare the expected data against using SQL. So let's try running this. So the way that we run tests is just by using dbt tests. And let's use again our make file and do a copy paste of this one. I mean, almost copy paste. And we're going to add tests. And here, instead of doing a dbt run, we do a dbt test and see if it works. So we have a couple of things pass and error, uh, which is weird. But the reason is that we didn't remove any of the example models that has validation within the schema.yaml file. So here you see we have a couple of tests that we can define in this uh, uh, file, which is like tests on unique, not null. So let's just remove all those things in the model because we actually don't need it. So I just deleted uh, the example and the schema and I recreated one in the roots of models and just specify the model names here. So let's run it again. And as you can see here is require, of course, our start date because that's uh, a requirement. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to pass them to my dbt test command. And be careful that this one is depending on the fixture data, right? So because our fixture in our test data is actually, you know, between that range uh, of data. And so my model will filter based on the range and would hopefully result uh, the test successfully. So let's try again. So now it passed. Um, so let's change just some value to uh, to check. So for example, if I do if I change dot nine dot one, I would have one row which is on three dot nine and another which is three dot eight. So you see now it said it's failing because the expected data uh, doesn't match. And as you can see, this was uh, what you received from using the model and the mark data, one row of 3.9 and one row of 3.8 with one and one. And I actually pass it, this is what is expected. So we have a really clear uh, feedback loop on your unit testing and you can really quickly um, build complex models and everything here is happening locally. I'm using DuckDB and it's really super fast. So no cloud dependency. And that's how we should do unit tests is without any third party uh, cloud service dependency. And because they run locally, they can also run on your CI at pull request or whatever have you in your process. So now we have our model ready. We have our test ready, but the data is only staying locally in the dev DuckDB. And I would like to expose it to S3 or sync it to Mother Duck. 
So let's go back to our profiles. So here we can leave it the dev as it is, but to connect to mother deck, which will be the, the proud, instead of passing a, a file pass, we just pass a connection stream, which is MD colon. And let's take a moment to visualize what's happening uh, using the dev target and the prod target. So when using the dev target, basically your dbt client contains the DB and the compute is happening locally. That means that you're reading data from S3 and then uh, potentially after writing also uh, to S3. Everything, the compute is happening locally. When you're using Mother Duck, you act like a client where it's sending SQL and Mother Duck is going to read from there your S3 bucket and compute on the cloud side which need that you will need to provide to MotherDuck an AWS credential that can have the access needed to either read or write to S3. So coming back to our profiles, basically that means that for the requirement to sync to MotherDuck, you need a MotherDuck account. You can get it for free on MotherDuck.com. And once you create your account, you can add your AWS secrets right in the UI, or you can also use the CLI command connect to MotherDuck and create the secrets. And as you hear, you can also grab your token here that will be ex uh, used to connect to MotherDuck from the DBT client. If you check the DataEnv template, we have basically the MotherDuck token, which is the expected name of the variable, and you just pass your MotherDuck token. All right, to sync to MotherDuck, to recap, we need a MotherDuck token, and that basically it to run this tutorial because the S3 bucket is public. So you actually don't need to pass any AWS credential. But if you have a private bucket with our own data that you use in the part one of the tutorial the ingestion, then you will need a specific AWS credential uh, to read this S3 bucket that you own. And for running DuckDB where it's processed locally, kind of the same story to read the data the bucket is public for this tutorial. But also you need here, we want to write to S3 also. That was the goal of this tutorial. So let's fix that. So what I just did is basically create a macros. So export partition data. And in this macro, I basically use the copy command to uh, from DuckDB. So here you see that I'm using the copy and I'm selecting basically my table. And I also set an environment path for the S3 path. You see here, again, no hard-coded S3 bucket for the output data. And I'm writing the data as partition per year and months. So it's Hive partitioning. So the data would look like uh, basically something like this, my bucket slash year, doing year three, and then month uh, equal, sorry, April, because we have data from April, 2023. And also important thing is that we overwrite always a specific partition. So if you rerun, uh, basically, I guess, same data set would not append the data, but we just overwrite the existing uh, data set. Note that we use S3 here as part of this macro, but you can easily adapt this macro to write locally as CSV or as Spark. So now the question is like, how do we actually trigger this macro? And that is happening in the dbt project.com. So we're going to add a post hook, which is calling the macro. This dot name refer to the current uh, model. So it will basically pass the PyPI daily stats, which is going to be used here as a table name, which is the basically the table name, the model equal the table name. So we don't need to hard code it again here. It's a dbt variable. And here I'm just passing because that's part of the macro. Uh, what is the date column that is going to be used for partitioning? If you remember in here, I'm creating a year column and a month column based on this uh, date column to be able to partition the data as we saw earlier. So the table, we always reprocess the full table. But because we only process the data based on a time window, it's kind of a workaround strategy to support incremental load or append uh, to your S3 bucket because incremental load is not supported for external model. Because in that case, we are talking still here about um, our dev where we 
compute locally and we export to S3, those parameters at the moment are applied for both when we run DuckDB locally or we, when we run to the cloud. One thing we forget also is because we run uh, the copy command against an S3 bucket, we need to load the AWS credential for DuckDB to have the authorization to write to this bucket. And for that, we're just gonna use a pre hook And for that, we don't really need to uh, create a specific macro. We're just gonna call directly call load AWS credential. This is a DuckDB command, which is using the AWS extension. And so when you actually uh, do this, it's gonna load where your credential is, typically on, you know, dot AWS uh, folder, which is in your home directory. And by default, it's just load the default profile. You can specify uh, a specific AWS profile that you want uh, to load the credential. So here we have the pre hook, which is loading the AWS credential that will enable us to authorize the writing. And then we have a post hook with the macro, which is using the copy command, copy the current model, uh, which is in dev DuckDB to um, S3. All right, now if we rerun everything, basically we're gonna have the same results, but the data afterwards is gonna be exported to S3. So I have a small error, it's simple. I haven't passed the transform S3 uh, bucket. So I'm gonna go to my .env and provide this field. We rerun it and it's working. By the way, I had a small syntax issue as you can see here, I need to use the Jinja template to tell uh, DBT that I'm actually uh, calling a macro, which is different here where I'm just basically uh, calling directly a SQL command to DuckDB. No, the last thing challenging is that uh, we don't need to have those things when we target to prod. Why is that so? Because when we try target to prod, we target to mother duck, if you remember, and we don't want to copy the data to S3. We want to actually load it directly to mother duck, as I explained in the intro, because that's going to be useful when we build our dashboard and we connect to mother duck. So you can put actually a condition here that based on the target, you do certain pre hook and certain post hook action. There we go. Let's inspect what I just did. First, regarding marginalized, I explained that the incremental feature from DBT to load only uh, the new data is not supported for external model. But for mother duck, for internal model, that would work. So basically, I specify that the marginalized should be incremental when we connect to prod, which is mother duck, and else we can use the table and override the partition on a street. And specifying the unique ID, which is needed for the incremental features. And finally, regarding pre hook, I'm just saying that if you work locally using the dev target, we need to load the AWS credential to be able to write to S3. But if you're working with Motherduck, that's not needed because the, because the secret is stored on Motherduck side. Finally, for the post hook, it's kind of the same story. I don't need to export um, if it's on prod. All right, let's run against um, mother duck this time. So I'm using the same make command, right? Specifying the start date and the end date, and then basically the prod uh, target, which is mother duck. I have my mother duck token specified in an environment variable. And uh, that's basically it because the AWS credential are stored already on mother duck side and the data source is public right? It's the S3 bucket we saw earlier. So let's just run uh, this one. And you can see here, it's going to be an incremental load. So it's going to only in, uh, load data uh, that is new. And now we can actually check if we go basically using the CLI, you can go to the UI, right? And check out if the table is there. So this is the UI, right? That we saw earlier. But I want to show you through the CLI. I like using the CLI too. So if you want to connect to MotherDuck from the CLI, you do an attach uh, MD uh, colon. If you don't provide your token, you'll be redirected to the web page and it will authenticate you. I have my MotherDuck token as an environment variable, so it will just connect directly. And now I can see all my cloud database. 
And basically my table should be on my DB, which is a default DB and the name of the model, the DBT model. So let's check the data and the data is there. And that's basically it. So we have a couple of important files. Let's just go again over it. We have the models that we built through exploration. Then we basically abstract the source. We had uh, some where condition where we provide all a start date and an end date to always process within a time window. Um, the source file basically define uh, the actual path to the source data. We use environment variable. We use a specific package for dbt unit test and the tests are pretty straightforward. We mark the source using SQL. It works pretty nice even if we're complex type. And then I'm defining what is expected and is using the model and evaluate. This is all running DuckDB locally with no cloud dependency. So it's pretty fast and easy to iterate against your model. And finally, we have on our DBT uh, project uh, file, a couple of, of things materialized to specify uh, incremental load when we run against mother duck on or otherwise table, and then specify pre hook and post hook on when using locally because we want to load a credential and export the data to S3. And this is done using a macro uh, and the copy command from DuckDB to write to S3 with a partition, which is our uh, year and month here. All right, what's next? Well, in this video, we started a brand new DBT project with the DuckDB adapter. We created our first model reading data from S3 using DuckDB capabilities. And we had the option to either push to S3 and compute locally or use modern Duck to leverage the cloud computing and incremental load feature. We also saw how easy it is to create a new unit test. And finally, we can create real one without any third party cloud dependency. We mock the data and we run DuckDB in the same DBT process. And that can be local or in the CI or whatever you want. I mean, look at this, it's beautiful. Anyway, I'll see you in the part three and we'll quack some dashboard using BI as code tool. And may the quack be with you.